this is Callie Chappelle, and thanks for tuning in to this video, Introduction to Debate, Part 2. This video is part of a series, the Novice Go Fight Win series, aimed at teaching novice debaters how to do policy debate. So a little about me, my, again, my name is Callie Chappelle, and I'm a former debater for the University of Michigan. I debated for Traverse City Central High School, and I currently coach for Gulliver Prep. I am a 2N, 1A, and you'll learn very soon what that means. And a fun fact about me is that I like to call, okay, so I think the plural of novices, of novice is novices, even though the rest of my team is adamant that the plural of novice is novi. So hopefully we'll have a spirited debate in the comment section about what is right, but let's get started. So before we get too ahead of ourselves, quick disclaimers. So first is how do you make the most out of these videos? Well, policy debates like super complicated and a lot of stuff's going to be coming at you right at once. So what you should do is take notes of these videos and you should definitely rewatch bits you need re-explain. The stuff's pretty complicated and there's nothing wrong with being like, whoa, need to stop, need to ask a question, send an email to a you debater, send an email to your coach, be like, hey, got a question, do it. Hopefully we'll have worksheets and or supplemental materials that go along with the video, so check out the video description to see if that's the case. Next, you don't need to memorize it all. There's going to be a bunch of info thrown at you, especially after this, uh, right after this initial set of videos, but what you should do is at least be familiar with everything in the video because it's a building process. Also, your coach may like things different, or you may like to debate in different style. Totally okay, this is just a starting point, not an end point. So throwback Thursday, you'll notice that a lot of these videos come in sections and every time I have a different part, so we're on part two or part three, I like to have a throwback Thursday that just reminds us about what we were, where we had gone before. And if there's anything that I cover here that you're confused about, definitely go back and rewatch the previous video because it all builds. So what did we cover in the last video? That's intro debate part one. Well, we talked about what makes debate awesome. So many things. What debate is and is not. And then a general idea about what a debate looks like. Um, so you... We introduce there are things that the AF and NEG must prove for each respective side to win, and that there are particular times that different debaters will speak in an organized fashion. And remember that we're talking about policy debate here, so if you are a public forum, a Lincoln Douglas, or a Parley kid, yeah, we'd love to have you, but these videos may not be the most helpful. So, here's a question to you. Can you brainstorm ways that the U.S. should substantially or could substantially curtail its domestic surveillance? Well, if you're anything like me, probably not. You know, I don't know that much about domestic surveillance off the top of my head, and I'm guessing that you probably don't either. But luckily, in, in policy debate, you don't have to know that much about it right starting out. That's why we use evidence. So evidence in debate is super cool because if you don't know some, that much about something, if you're not an expert, and trust me, none of us are, you can bring your notes up in the form of evidence with you in a debate. And you'll quickly know that in debate, we love to come up with fancy names for things. We call individual pieces of evidence cards. And then when we have large documents with large amounts of evidence all combined, we call those files. And lucky for you, novices have access to a lot of these files that are already prepared for you. So why do we call them cards? Well, cards actually come from when debaters would photocopy books and glue them onto pieces of cardstock, and they'd store these cards, literal cards, in expanding file folders and tote them around at debate tournaments in huge tubs. Now, we debate paperless, so that means that we debate with our evidence off computer, not off of a piece of cardstock. But the transition actually has only happened over the past few years. Like, in my day, when I started debating, when I was a novice in, oh god, I don't know, in 2010? 2010? 2009? 2010? A lot of people still debated with paper. They, we, It's only been in the past couple years that we've really transitioned into... Uh, into paperless debate and what's made paperless debate so awesome is that we have some new technology that allows it to be much easier the first is dropbox so dropbox is an online file sharing program and what it does is it adds a folder to your computer just like on my documents or my photos folder and if you save or alter a file in that dropbox it automatically gets uploaded to the cloud online and what is really cool about it is multiple people can be part of your Dropbox. And when you change a folder in your Dropbox, it changes a folder in everyone else's computer that's shared with that same Dropbox folder. So with great, respons with great responsibility also comes more responsibility. God, that's not what the 
saying is but when you have this kind of responsibility you have to be good with it and that means that you should not delete things off the dropbox unless you ask your coach or instructor first because the worst thing is a novice who's like haha i'm so cool i'm gonna delete this and suddenly it's gone all that work is gone the second thing that I want to introduce you to is verbatim. So verbatim is a file formatting software in Microsoft Word that makes all debate files and cards pretty uniform. So the most recent iteration of verbatim as of August 2015 when I'm recording this is verbatim 5 and you can download it by googling debate verbatim. It's the first thing that comes up. It's super easy. Just download the one for PC or Mac. And you're good to go. And I'm going to show you what that looks like in a second. So don't be this debater. Again, this meme goes on Dropbox and makes five conflicted copies. This is not something I made up. This is something that is a real problem for people across the country. So remember, ask before you delete. So let's go on a field trip to the Dropbox. So I'm going to X out of this. And I just want to say before I move on that you'll notice that my toolbar here is on the side. And this is something that a lot of debaters like to do because it allows us to see more things. So if you want to move your toolbar around, just hit unlock, unlock the taskbar. Um, this is Windows 10, but it looks exactly the same on Windows 8 and Windows 7. And you can move it all around. Now, if you have a Mac, I cannot speak to that because I know absolutely nothing about Macs. But talk to your varsity, talk to your coach if you've got more questions. One thing I would highly recommend is actually getting Parallels or some kind of other way to run, uh, to run Windows on a Mac because it makes debate, um, paperless debate way easier. So, okay, so we've got our taskbar here on the side. It is locked. And now I'm going to find my Dropbox. So here, this is just my uh, user folder on my computer. And you'll see the Dropbox is a folder here, just like documents, pictures, videos, etc. So I'm going to click on Dropbox. And you'll see that I've got a bunch of other stuff in here, um, like my school stuff. But the one that I want to go into is Gulliver. Uh, actually, is none of these things. So I'm actually going to go over to Callie's Dropbox, okay? And this is just a quick ask. This is a quick access bar that's in Windows 10, but any other Windows platform should have this. And what you can do that makes things super easy is when I have a folder, regardless of whether it's my Dropbox or not, I can just drag it over here and it goes onto the quick access bar. So I'm going to move this because I don't want it there. But instead of having to go through all of my folders, I can just quickly access it here on the side. That's a big time saver. So here's my Dropbox. And you'll notice that I've got a bunch of folders. Afs, case negs, counterplans, DAs, critiques, T, theory, etc. And you'll quickly learn what these things are. But I have essentially, for your purposes right now, I've got a bunch of folders that are organized by different types of arguments. And inside of these folders, I have different files. And the files are named by the name of the file, where I got the file, or... Uh, whoever wrote the file um, and then the, the tournament usually, well this is preseason, and then the year. Okay, so let's take a look at what this file looks like and this is going to have a bunch of stuff in here that's not going to mean anything to you right now, it's totally fine but what I want to show you is what verbatim looks like. So this is where we have uh, Microsoft Word. Actually, you know what? I'm going to show you this one instead. Um, so I'm opening up Microsoft Word and it opens in verbatim. So after you've downloaded verbatim, you're going to get this other tab here and there's going to be a whole video all about verbatim and there's, I think there are already some online that show how to use it, but it essentially gets this tab in addition to the normal Word tabs with all sorts of fancy debate stuff. And what this fancy debate stuff allows us to do is quickly go through this file using the navigation pane to find exactly what we need, okay? And it's got this layered effect such that you can expand and collapse as many of these as you want to clean up or expand your file as needed, okay? So I just wanted to show you this. We're going to talk about exactly how to organize a Dropbox folder, exactly how to use verbatim in subsequent videos. But I want to show you that verbatim is a thing and so is Dropbox and ex kind of how to use it. So let's go back to our PowerPoint. The first thing that I want you to know is don't freak out. So you should just look through the files if you have access in your free time. Uh, you can download the files at NDCA Open Evidence or um, these videos are going to use evidence put out by the Georgia Novice Debate Packet. And you don't have to memorize anything right now. The big point, the big takeaway I want you to get is what Dropbox is, kind of how to use it and how to be respectful on it, as well as how to download verbatim and what verbatim looks like and how it functions. So we're going to have other videos about how to make blocks, cut cards, organize Dropbox, but this is just the intro. So what was the resolution again? I'm sitting here scratching my head. Resolve, the United States federal government should substantially curtail its domestic surveillance. 
you and this phrase are going to become very good friends over the course of this year. So why so many files? Well, that resolution sounds pretty big. The app can choose any topic to talk about under the res resolution, for example, drones. And there's a ton of different topics that are associated with domestic surveillance. So not only does this mean that we're gonna get into a lot of research for the AF team, but the NEG team also has to be prepared to respond to any possible AF. What? That's why we have so many files. Yeah, I know, wait, what? Sounds pretty crazy, but the bottom line is researching is a lot of fun. So how do we handle all that research? Well, the first thing is debaters are really organized. They want to be able to find files and arguments quickly. That's why I explained how I have my computer set up, how I have my folder set up, and even how I have my Word documents to set up to maximize efficiency and organization. And the second and most important is preparation, preparation, preparation. You don't have to know everything at once. You can learn a little bit at a time, and frankly, at the beginning, it's kind of confusing. But as you practice and work, it gets easier. It's just like learning to play the piano or learning how to ride a bike. The more that you do it, the better at it you get. So files are the lifeline of a debater. So pretty soon, you'll learn how to read quickly, analyze the evidence, and be ready for a debate. But preparation means that you'll have a better chance of success. So where did these files come from? The first is debate camps. Believe it or not, most debaters attend stay away debate camps where they improve their summer skill or their debate skills during the summer. And they're usually held on college campuses and they can be anywhere between one to seven weeks long. I know you're thinking you're pretty crazy, but trust me, debate camp is so much fun. I've been both a debater myself at debate camp and I've also been an RA. Uh, which is kind of like a camp counselor, and it's awesome. And the second place that files come from is your team. So your team also will research throughout the year, and it will produce your own evidence through your own work. So you should learn the basics before you start researching, though. So don't get ahead of yourself. If you want to do research, that's great. But right now, just learn the basics. So what does a card look like? Well, the first part of a card is the tag. So the tag, which is right here, which is right here, is a short sentence that sums up what the evidence is talking about. It usually includes some kind of debate lingo. This tag doesn't. The second thing is the site. And this is where you say where you found the evidence. And this is where you say where you found the evidence and some information about it. But in an actual debate, you'll only say the author and the date. So here you'd only say Donahue 15. You wouldn't say Laura K. Donahue, associate professor of law, blah, 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 blah. You just say Donahue 15 after reading the tag and then go on to read the rest of the evidence. Um, so one thing that you should know is typically you just cite the year when you say it out loud. You always write the full citation, the full year here, on the full like month, day, year. Uh, but if you're talking about some types of evidence, like uniqueness evidence of the politics DA, don't worry, you'll figure out what that is. Then you should you might say the day and the month instead of the year if it's from this year. So. Other information you should include in a citation, not what you say out loud, but just in the citation of the card is the credentials of the author, the title of the article, and the overall source. So if it's a website, if it comes from, um, f uh, I don't know, if it comes from the Wall Street Journal, say it's from the Wall Street Journal, if it's from a database, if it's from JSTOR, say it's from JSTOR, etc. You should have the full date the article was published if possible. So for example, 4 13 2002 or fall 2011 if it's a periodical right so sometimes journals only publish like four times a year so they'll have like a fall summer winter spring article and then a url if it's found online so this is the url so one thing that's super great is i just saw i think scott phillips published uh, a recent a recent article on the high school impact blog about good citation practices you should definitely check that out um, but I just want to show you what a citation is and that what it includes and the last thing is the card text so that's this and the card text includes a part or all the article you can only omit parts of an article before after you want uh, before or after what you want but not in between and if part of the article before and after what you want says something that's completely against the part that you're actually trying to read then that's actually immoral and you can't do that in debates 
and you'll notice that important parts of the evidence are underlined and bolded and very important parts of the evidence are highlighted. So this is what you actually read out loud in the debate round. And do not highlight every word. In fact, it's actually to your benefit to highlight the most efficient way to prove the point in the tag. So the card text, remember, has three parts. It has the actual full article or the full part of the article. It has part of that, the most important parts are underlined and bolded. And then the most and most important parts, the parts that you're actually going to say in a debate round are highlighted. So let's take a look at this card again. So remember, here's the tag, here's the site, and here's the card text, and I'm only going to read the highlighted parts because they make full sentences and are um, only saying the most important parts of the card. So let's take a look at what this card would actually sound like if I was in a debate round. So ready? Buckle in because we're going to go fast. Okay. First, NSA surveillance is estimating the U.S. tech industry the fall will be large long-term unless confidence U.S. companies restored on he 15. The NSA programs have immediate detrimental impact on the U.S. economy. They cost billions in lost sales. The market shares decline for an entity's revenues increase. The in which the NSA has perpetrated foreign data flows is undermined. The U.S. trade agreement negotiations has spurred uh, data localization around the world and the of future world. The U.S. and, and, and internet governance sees a signal and immediate long-term impact on the NSA and the U.S. econ. Oh, whoa. What just happened? Well, debaters actually speed read or spread for short. So what you just heard, and you're probably like, oh my god, I have no idea what she just said. That's crazy. But what we do is we train ourselves to speak really fast, and we also train ourselves to understand other people really fast in order to make more arguments in a short amount of time. So it's strategic to talk fast in debate rounds because you can make more arguments because speeches are timed. You can introduce more evidence to support your arguments, and you can make more arguments than your opponents. So... We, no novice i've been debating for a really long time no novice sounds that fast but how do you get faster well you just practice 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 if you practice 10 to 15 minutes a night just reading out loud really fast it'll help you improve tremendously and be just as fast but what i just said no novice speaks that fast but seriously though that sounds really crazy well it's kind of like a gunfight the more bullets you have, the better chance you have of winning. So then the bullets are the, are the evidence. So if you have more evidence, the better chance you have of winning any given debate. So did you, if you were in a gunfight, would you want to fight with just one bullet? Or would you want a machine gun with lots of bullets? Well, you think you'd want a lot of bullets in a fight, and you want lots of arguments like bullets. So, and no one expects you to be that fast right now. It takes a lot of practice. And in novice debates, they really don't speak that fast. No, they probably speak around conversational speed but you can always ask the other team for their evidence and they'll have they'll let you look at it if you're confused and trust me you're gonna be fine i'm throwing a lot of stuff at you because i believe that you're smart and will pick this up really fast but if you feel yourself hyperventilating go find a bag but also stay tuned because we'll keep you super updated so what should you have learned from this video the first is debate is different and awesome probably from what you were expecting the second is that we have a specific topic that we're supposed to talk about, that is surveillance, uh, that there's an affirmative team and a negative team, and that we can't just talk whenever we feel like it. There's speaker positions are timeless, and that was covered in the previous video. The fifth is that you have to argue both sides of the topic, and the debaters are hyper-organized and use lots of evidence. You can also bring and use your notes and evidence during the debate, even while speaking, and that there are certain things you have to do and prove to win a debate. The two biggest things, though, are the tournaments are fun and the debaters are really cool and don't freak out you should be excited about how much there is to learn and discover and i will be with you every step of the way so thanks for tuning into this video and i hope you tune into the next one which is q a about debate